Okay, guys. So today we'll be solving the question bit difference on Geeks for Geeks. So the question says you're given two numbers A and B, and the task is to count the number of bits needed to be flipped to convert A to B. So what the question is saying is that you're given two values, ten and twenty. So the binary representation of ten is zero one zero one zero, and binary representation of B is one zero one zero zero. So what we have to do is we have to find out how many bits are needed to be converted, flipped. So here zero and zero are the same value. One and zero are different. So how many of the similar values like these are present that we need to be flipped so that ten becomes twenty? So we have to check if one and zero are same. So they are not. So this needs to be flipped to convert it into twenty. Zero and one are not same. So we need to uh, flip it to convert it into twenty. One and zero are not same, so we need to flip it to convert it into twenty. And zero and one are not same, so we need to flip it to convert it into twenty. Okay, so one way to so, uh, so the one way to solve it would be using the XOR method. So let me explain to you guys. So if you have zero one zero one and zero and one zero one zero zero, so What we could do is we could just keep the values which have zero one with uh, zero one as one, and values which have the proper zero zero, the same elements as uh, zero. So it would become one, one, one three times, and zero, zero. Okay. So what we are initially doing is we are trying to. We'll just keep all the values which need to be flipped as one and which are not need to be flipped as zero. And when we do this, we just need to count the number of ones present so that we find out how many bits, uh, how many values are need to be flipped. So for second example of twenty and twenty-five, we can check that we have one zero, one zero zero, and one one zero zero one, and this will be zero. One, one, zero, and one. Yeah. So we have three values, and we need to find out how many ones are present to just flip it. So what the XOR method is? In XOR, we see that zero zero gives you zero, zero one gives you one, one zero gives you one, and one one gives you zero. So this is initial. So this is essentially the XOR method, and you can see that we're doing the same thing over here. So if we do this, we just need to find out the number of ones present, and we can get the answer. So how we do this? As I'll cover it and show it to you guys. Okay, so commenting this out and running it. Okay, uh, so this is answer count. Sorry. Why is it taking so long? Yeah, so four. So you can see the answer is four over here, and I'm submitting it. Yeah, we get the correct answer. So what we're doing here, this symbol hat symbol is the XOR value. So we're just taking the XOR value of ten and twenty and storing it in n. And then we're checking this value 
over here this is going to be the n now so now we're checking if n is greater than zero which is it which it is and then we're adding it with one now if we add it with one if we add it with one what will happen is here you'll get a one okay now as you know in adding it zero and one will give you a zero value so if we get a zero value we won't go inside this and we just do a right shift over here now if we do a right shift this value will be eliminated and we'll get a zero over here there is zero over here now if we go inside the loop again we have one and one if we have one and one the value of and will be one so the answer will be incremented by one so this is going to be one now so we do a perform a right shift now this will go away and we have a zero over here now similarly for the next three ones if we do and we'll get one one and one again and we do a right shift again 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 and after that we get a zero so now n is greater than zero so we uh, break out of the loop and return the answer so essentially we get the answer four so yeah this is how you solve the problem